Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. This is J.R. Moore and Ann Morrison substituting for Dr. Bill Deagle here on Genesis, the Nutra Medical Report. Uh, we'll be uh, carrying this uh, for the next half hour, and then I think we have a guest joining us, Ann, at the bottom of the hour, don't we? Um, not that I'm aware of. Well, uh, I, the message I got from Dr. Bill was that we'd be joined by somebody at the bottom of the hour. In the meantime, this is J.R. Moore. I do a Monday through Friday show on Republic Broadcasting, 7 to 8 uh, a.m., Monday through Friday. And Ann Morrison, uh, she has her, her own website and is a frequent guest on my show. Her website is homeland-defense-4letteru.com. My website is thelibertyman.com. And I was telling you off the air a few minutes ago that in the last two hours, one of my confidential sources, actually two of them, have come up with some very vital information that according to the Center for Disease Control, which we sometimes call, the, jokingly, the Center for Disease Creation, the uh, West Nile virus and the H3N2V, that's Hotel 3, November 2, Victor virus, has now combined into one uh, organism, which uh, I think we can all agree cannot possibly happen in nature, um, um, yeah, well, actually, it did. It mixed in the human body. The last, um, the last live attenuated virus that was given to uh, children and people up to age 60 contained both an H1N1 and an H3N2, and they have mixed within the human body. Well, I, I'm, that, that's the part that can happen. But I'm talking about what cannot happen is the West Nile virus mixing with these. In, in nature, that can't happen naturally. In fact, the you know, information I got in is that uh, the only laboratory that could do that is a uh, Russian biological weapons lab in Belarus, which is a, a part of Russia, of course. Uh, anybody who wants to learn more about biological weapons, I urge them to get their hands on a book that has a one-word title. The title of it is Bio- Biohazard. Many libraries have had it, and many have pulled it off the shelves because it's really a scary book written by Ken Alibeck. Uh, Ken, uh, Ken Alibeck is an anglicized version of a uh, Muslim, southern Muslim name. Uh, Ken worked in the Russian biological weapons program for more than two, two decades and received a number of awards for creating things that God never intended to live on this planet before he escaped and defected to the West, where he began uh, documenting and uh, letting people know the true nature and the true size of the Russian Biological Weapons Program, which is massive, absolute massive program with thousands of scientists and uh, more than a dozen locations where they make these uh, horrendous uh, weapons of, of uh, biological weapons. So, Ann, that's uh, an update there. I know that this morning we, we were talking about uh, a number of topics, uh, what's going on with these nuclear plants in the United States, uh, and quite a few of them have been shut down, haven't they? They have, and I think that's because the CME, the CME that came in July 12th, um, they they lost a lot of uh, emergency diesel generators on that case, and uh, they're they're now looking at their safety procedures for uh, magnetic. Well, it created ground currents, and apparently the plants are not protected against ground currents. Okay, and I should uh, tell everybody there's a. Pretty good uh, little thunderstorm over me. It, it may have passed over, but uh, I've already been knocked off the air once while I was waiting for the show to start. So uh, <laughs> if uh, if I suddenly go silent in the middle of a sentence, that's what's going on there. Anyway, Ann, um, the um, CME, of course, is a coronal mass ejection. For those who don't know, it's a natural event, um, a huge wave of energy coming out from the sun. And that can create a ground wave current that can knock out these uh, emergency backup generators, can't it? Uh, yeah, there have been several instances where, where that's occurred. And uh, once that happens, then if something should happen, if they should lose um, um, outside power, they all need outside power. And if they should lose outside power, such as due to a storm like you're going through, then uh, they, those e- emergency diesel generators aren't useful. Well, and and that would lead to what happening? Well, that means that they go into a uh, what's called a uh, a uh, <laughs> an event where you shut down the uh, it's called a scram. Okay, and, is that uh, they had, than a hot shutdown? That is a hot shutdown. It is a hot shutdown. Okay, it's different words, the same thing. Okay. 
Well, a scram is the actual action that's, that makes the hot shutdown occur. Okay. So you say that the nuclear plant is in a condition of hot shutdown, but the operator is the one that pushes the button called scram. And okay. then that, and that will automatically, generally it will automatically insert the control rods into the nuclear power pile. But even if, if the automatic uh, shutdown doesn't work, then they are manually prepared to insert the control rods into the pile. Okay. So, well, we certainly don't want that to happen. And um, any idea how many uh, of the nuclear power plants were affected in this manner? Uh, I've heard up to six, but they're, the, at the same time, what's going on is that the NRC has issued directives because of the, well, this is their reasoning, because of the earthquake that occurred in Japan, which damaged the Fukushima uh, nuclear power plant, and because of the 5.8, the magnitude 5.8 earthquake that occurred in Virginia that closed down the uh, North, An North Anna, uh, nuclear power plant. They are now re requiring all nuclear power plants to be investigated. And one of the things they're looking for is can something fall during an earthquake that would damage equipment that we need to run the plant? Right, right. So it's just simple housekeeping. Uh, you know, they just hadn't looked at what an earthquake could do. And it sounds to me like they're really worried about a big earthquake. Well, my inside sources are telling me uh, that uh, people that are connected to uh, certain families are being told that they should evacuate if they're East Mississippi and get themselves West Mississippi as soon as possible because of these earth changes and, and the uh, very likely effect that they'll have on these nuclear power plants causing them to go into an uncontrolled uh, uh, or out-of-control situation where the vast amounts of radiation would be released. So that's what I'm hearing from my private sources is that people are, and with these connected families are being told to get themselves west Mississippi as soon as they can and before the Mississippi becomes a river um, waterway 50 to 100 miles wide and 200 feet deep. And, of course, the only people crossing them would be the military. Well, I, I think that's probably a wise thing to do. Um, if those, they have a lot of nuclear power generation stations or plants on the, along the East Coast, and, of course, we do have some here in the Midwest, too. Um, you don't want to be too close to any of them, I don't think. But um, we do have the uh, possibility of, a, of an asteroid coming in. Uh, they've just announced that... The 2012 QG42, and this was updated September 14th, will <laughs> will come within six moon distances. Now that doesn't seem like much, but the uh, important part of this message that's on the JPL NEO site is that the uh, condition code is six. Now the condition code goes from zero to nine, and nine means that, that the um, that we just don't know how good our calculations are. <laughs> and so six is way above half of that. And so it could be uh, six lunar distance plus or minus four. Now, a lunar distance is about a quarter million miles, I believe. Uh, it's 202,000 miles. 200, not, quite, yeah. not quite a quarter million miles, just a little over 200,000 miles. So uh, six of those would be just over a million miles, not quite a one and a half million miles. Right, but because the condition code is a six. Now, remember the other um, the other asteroid we talked about. They have not updated that since May, and I'm really suspicious about that. Uh, in May, there was the last update on that, and it was going to strike the Earth on uh, February 15th at midnight. I hear music. Okay, well we got a break coming up. Everybody, stay tuned. We'll be back after the break. All right. 
right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back. This is J.R. Moore and Ann Morrison substituting for Dr. Bill Deagle. Uh, I thought we were going to be joined by Alexander Bachman, but uh, Alexander, are you there, sir? Okay. I guess he didn't make it back. He was talking to us during the break, and uh, we thought he would be with us. Maybe he's having a thunderstorm where he is as well. Uh, we were talking during the break about um, the serious chemical weapons arsenal. And um, Alexander thoughtfully posted this at his website at the Debka file uh, article. Debka is widely believed uh, to be connected to the Mossad uh, with the quality of information that they post. I would not be surprised at all if Debka file was uh, connected to the Mossad. But this uh, article here, uh, and they're, they're citing the Washington Post, that... Um, there's uh, several hundred tons of chemical weapons and precursors for we chemical weapons, uh, including battlefield-ready sarin gas at widely distributed uh, sites, uh, most dangerous sites kept in bunkers at a half dozen locations. Um, it show, the report shows that we're too low on specific knowledge to make good administration threat to Bashir Assad, uh, and uh, he may move his chemical weapon stocks. So, Ann, it looks like uh, we, once again, uh, if we go into this country, which I don't believe we have any valid reason to go into Syria myself, our men and women will once, once again be on a chemical battlefield as they were in Iraq. Um, I recall when I was talking to my friends in the, in the Army Reserve, I, I was actually considered going back on active duty for the Gulf, first Gulf War. 22 years ago, and my friends, uh, they told me, John's going to be a chemical battlefield. You want nothing to do with this. Stay away from it. And I do thank them profusely for giving me that heads up, uh, because most of them are either sick or dead, the ones that did go to the first Gulf War. So uh, anyway, Ann, uh, it looks like we're, once again, we being the United States, are, are preparing to go to war with a country that we have no argument with. The, a country which is at peace with its neighbors, uh, having internal difficulties, most likely stirred up by the CIA, uh, these Arab Spring uh, incidents are not spontaneous. They're, they're not grassroots spontaneous uprisings. They are contrived by our intelligence services, especially the CIA and the State Department, of course, working in collusion. So, and we're off to the races once again with another possible war in the Middle East, uh, this time with a, a country that has been a client state of Russia for decades. And Lord knows what they have there in terms of uh, equipment and supplies to be used against us. Do you have any thoughts on that, Ann? Well, yeah, the, um, those chemical weapons, apparently they had them stored around the countryside in different locations. They didn't have them in a centralized location, and they didn't have them near their big cities. And now a lot of the countryside has been uh, taken over by the rebels. That's what they're calling themselves. And uh, so there's some thought that maybe the rebels would get a hold of these chemical weapons mm. and then uh, sell them. Well, uh, that's a scary thought. Uh, these modern chemical weapons, uh, nerve gas, all it takes is one drop on exposed skin, and it will kill you. One drop. Um, and it, it's, it's a horrific way to die, by the way. Uh, very painful, horrific way to die. So uh, hopefully that will not be the case, and the Syrian government will maintain control over these stocks of uh, chemical and possibly biological weapons, too. Uh, these types of weapons are frequently referred to as the the poor man's nukes, uh, countries that can't afford to get their hands on nuclear weapons, typically they go the chemical and biological weapon route as a way to obtain what might be called weapons of mass destruction. So um, we'll see. I, I, I don't have enough information to know whether the Syrian government has maintained control over these biological chemical weapons or not. Uh, hopefully they have and they've done the right thing. And things are kind of chaotic over there, aren't they, Ann? Well, and that's what we're getting out of uh, the State Department and out of the administration is, you know, it's like they're building up. You know, they keep talking more and more like there's this possibility and therefore we need to uh, 
make sure that uh, that doesn't happen and therefore a thought has to go and therefore we need to be involved. And um, I don't know how much of that is rhetoric or how much of that is... is uh, the last thing I heard, Assad said he had control over all the chemical weapons and he was moving them to safe places. But I don't, Hello? you know, he could be moving them to Iran. Is that uh, Alexander? Yeah, Dan, hi. You're with us. You're back, Alexander. Okay, great. Well, we've got um, about four or five minutes here before the break, Alexander. I was talking about your article you have posted here uh, on your website from the Washington Post and Debka. Um, it's a very concerning matter, isn't it? Yes, uh, our line just got blocked by the sign. I mean, uh, it's being blocked. Our landline is being blocked for some uh, reason. We know what the reason is. The reason is the, there are interests here at play that do not want you to know that Barack Hussein Obama's uh, re-election is at risk if Israel attacks before the election day. And uh, one of the things that I would like to point people to the focus file at alexanderbachman.com so they can read it in the free time, download it before it's taken down or something. But what happens here is we're seeing a scenario where we're talking about thousands of tons of nuclear, uh, sorry, nuclear, uh, biological or chemical weapons. We have VX uh, gas. We have sarin gas. We have all types of little uh, end of the, end of, uh, the world uh, stockpiles of weapons that uh, Assad has, and the situation gets even worse when we see this, this contrived manipulation by uh, what's al-Qaeda, but al-Qaeda is financed by al-Qaeda, and then there's no up and down here because NATO is supporting these uh, Arab Spring movements all over the world, and now in Mexico we're having the same design all over again. By the 1st of December, we expect a revolution or a civil war to break out in Mexico the same way that's happening over there. So, you see, the situation is that this is the, the they're playing their last card. And their last card is to pressure Israel into a preemptive attack. Now, Israel has to attack because what, what's going on here is Israel has its hands tied. Uh, on, one, on one side of the equation, it has a real threat from Iran. Uh, the leadership in Iran and the imams in Iran has said and stated unequivocally that they want to wipe Israel off the map. That's not the common consensus of the, Isra of the Iranian population, nor the Israeli population for that matter. I mean, these are the, the big players that just want to duke it out by themselves. The problem is they want to take everybody down with them. And uh, for the survivability and uh, the necessary... Uh, existence of Israel, Israel is considering to attack before the U.S. election, and according to Mike Evans, a Middle Eastern specialist who sits down with these top brass uh, over there in Israel, it's confirmed that between the 15th of September or the 8th uh, through the 15th of October, Israel will strike Iran. Uh, and that is uh, a quote. So, well, we need to keep in uh, mind, Alexander, that, that uh, yeah, there, there's hundreds, if not thousands, of Russian, Chinese, and French technician uh, working this nuclear program in Iran, and uh, if Russian and Chinese uh, uh, technicians die, uh, there's going to be hell to pay. All right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen, we're back. This is J.R. Moore and uh, Ann Morrison and Alexander Bachman. Alexander's uh, website is Alexander Bachman, spelled with a K, AlexanderBachman.com. Uh, Ann Morrison is Homeland Hyphen Defense Number Four, Letter U dot com, and of course my website is TheLibertyManhunt dot com. We're substituting for Dr. Bill Deagle. His website is Nutramedical Report uh, or Nutramedical dot com. Excuse me, and this is a Nutramedical Report. Alexander, in the break, you were talking about an article uh, on your website uh, that uh, talks about this uh, uh, possible uh, preemptive strike on the part of Israel against Iran before the election. Um, that's a pretty scary thing, isn't it? Well, it is if you consider the consequences for Obama. I mean, he's probably scared uh, out of his wits, and he's probably in his little room over there in the White House, uh, you know, uh, praying to Allah or something, but... Uh, let me tell you something. Mike Evans is, uh, is an incredible man that is bringing out information here, and he's saying the following. He says, quote, 
This is on the ground presently. I mean the window of attack between the 15th of September through the 15th of October. He said, quote, this obviously something could preempt that, but because of that, Obama is trying to pressure Israel out of the attack because he's afraid that because of that he might not get reelected. Israel is trying to get a hard promise from the U.S. that they'll support an attack. Evans told World Net Daily. So, John, you know what would uh, what Obama would do if Israel tries to attack Iran before the election? What is that? Well, the information I'm getting, Alexander, is that uh, there will be a contrived economic meltdown slash collapse, leading to uh, bank holiday being declared. Uh, which would lead to civil disorder, because once these EBT cards, these electronic benefit transfer cards, which are basically debit cards, once they no longer work, uh, these cities will start burning in a matter of hours, if not minutes. Uh, that, of course, would lead to martial law being declared, at least in the major cities, where they're having civil disorder. And, of course, that easily could lead to uh, no elections in, in November as well. Um, the people behind Obama... Uh, the communist and international bankers behind Obama, they won't tolerate any chance of him losing an election. So they'll do what they need to do, including something as dramatic and, and disastrous as an economic meltdown to guarantee his continuation in office by not having elections. So it's a, it's a very serious situation, nothing to be taken lightly. And it's not only the economic collapse, we're also talking about, uh, according to Evans and... Uh, he indicated that he has knowledge that the Mexican drug cartels have received over $1 billion from Iran directly to insert or embed thousands of Hezbollah terrorists into the United States, and that they have orders that if the U.S. supports Israel's attack on Iran, then the terrorists would attack asymmetrically by hitting key Jewish population centers uh, within the United States. Uh, Mumbai-style attacks, I imagine, uh, plus other things. I mean, we I know that they Iran restrict, has started I, I, to use I, nuclear weapons. I agree weapons. with what you're saying, Alexander, but I doubt they were to restrict their activity to strictly Jewish targets. I, I believe it would be against uh, Americans in general. Uh, I just watched the film uh, The Siege um, the, uh, last night, and uh, Mumbai-type attacks uh, on the general population are certainly not... Uh, out of keeping with, with what they've done in other places. Um, I, I expect that they would attack shopping malls, elementary schools, uh, hospitals, any place where there's large groups of people, sporting events. It would be a, a great place to have thousands of people concentrated in one spot uh, to accomplish their goal of spreading terror and uh, attacking the great Satan, which is what they call us, don't they, Alexander? Yes, and I was uh, up in the United States uh, about two months ago over there near Kearney Mesa in California. I went to, a, I'm sorry for the commercial, uh, hometown buffet, and uh, we stayed there until 9 p.m., and uh, there, was, uh, there were seven men. They were all uh, from the Middle East speaking uh, Farsi, and they were all alone. They were not eating. They were just sitting down drinking uh, liquids and uh, scoping the entire restaurant. I mean, nobody, what, where's the alert bells there? Nobody's paying attention to these things. Just this week, on Monday, we got a word from somebody inside a Walmart in uh, Los Angeles where they saw uh, eight individuals of Middle Eastern uh, descent just walking inside the supermarket scanning. They, they didn't even buy anything. They were just walking right. around. Well, I'm not concerned. You know, those venues are, are pretty limited in the number of targets and potential victims. Some of these uh, college football stadiums are packed with 100,000 individuals on a Saturday afternoon. That's the kind of that's the kind of venue that I would be concerned about. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from. I, I do believe that the the scenario you see in the movie The Siege with uh, Bruce Willis and Denzel Washington is, is very, very possible indeed. Uh, you see, to uh, just blow up a bus in the middle of L.A. or Houston is not that difficult at all. No, it's not, and we don't we don't need to be running through scenarios. Uh, the the uh, terrorists have uh, all their plans well in place, and uh, there's been uh, and of course you're from Mexico, Alexander. You're very aware of the bits and pieces left behind inadvertently on the U.S. and Mexican border that 
clearly come from people that are, have come from the Middle East, aren't you? Yes, precisely. I mean, we have activity here as well. I mean, we go into the restaurants, and then we see like eight Turkish men speaking uh, Turk, uh, just eating by themselves uh, in, in Mexican restaurants all the time. What are the Turks doing here? Uh, what are the Israelis doing uh, south of the border? Why did Israel invest $100 million in its embassy in Mexico City and retrofitted it uh, with the top tech, te uh, super cutting edge technology? Uh, why do we have uh, 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 the Israelis building super secret underground bunkers under Mexico City that go all the way down 40 stories? Uh, why do we have the, the failed state scenario along the border with these uh, drug wars as a front in order to create that uh, destabilizing force to open up the borders for a massive invasion or incursion to the United States if need be? All these things are playing out right now, and we understand that Mexico is, is just is going to be uh, a, a world where the highest bidders are going to be playing as uh, uh, for Mexico and fighting for Mexico in order to get to the United States. I mean, that's the scenario we have right now. And well, I agree absolutely, see, Alexander. And, and uh, the, the American border with Mexico is uh, many, many miles of it are unguarded, unprotected. Uh, the talk about building a wall remains only talk after all these years. The high-tech um, <clears throat> devices that they worked with, uh, Boeing aircraft, I believe, to install down there was a complete and total failure and waste of taxpayer money. Uh, so we've had uh, American civilians uh, doing their little projects along the border with some effect, and the Border Patrol has basically been a, 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 a had their authority and power taken away from them. They, they really can't patrol the way they should with proper equipment and weapons and so forth. It's, a, it's an absolute mess down there, isn't it? Yes. And uh, the, the situation will escalate. You will see we have it last December reported by Univision out of Miami, a special report on the Iranian threat, how Iran is trying to uh, compromise Mexican university students in order to create a super cyber attack against the United States. It is my contention that uh, Anonymous is a front for these groups, not necessarily Iran. It could be rogue uh, elements within the, the CIA even that are creating all these uh, cyber attacks in order to create uh, all these, uh, uh, you know, elements that will eventually blow up into a full-scale war. I mean, we're already in World War III. The thing is that right. it hasn't become an open war as we would expect. And right, right. now well, with the Turkey, yeah, go ahead. Well, world, we didn't call World War II World War II until it had already been going on for about four or five years. You know, the invasion of Manchuria by Japan, the, the invasion of Ethiopia by Italy, um, that was the beginning parts of World War II, but nobody called it that for several years, did they? All right, we're back, ladies and gentlemen. We're back. This is J.R. Moore substituting for Dr. Deagle, and with us we have Ms. Ann Morrison and, and Mr. Alexander Bachman, the Mexican journalist. His website is alexanderbachman.com. Alexander, during the break, you gave me a heads up on something I was not aware of. Apparently, the Canadian government has closed their embassy in Tehran, Iran. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, this is on the Drudge Report right now. Uh, we have uh, what he's saying, an October surprise, probably. Canada closes embassy in Iran, and it brings diplomats home. Obviously, when we see the G7 closing their embassies within Iran, that means an attack is imminent. We say it uh, openly, it is imminent. That means right. at any moment now you will see Israel uh, start, you know, maneuvers in order to stop this. We have Turkish uh, officials now uh, taking command of the serial rebel brigades in northern, and northern Israel is on alert. So it's going down. Well, you, when a country closes an embassy under the conditions that Canada is doing it, that tells me that they want to get their, protect their people, uh, get all their classified documents stored or shredded or whatever they're going to do, and move out in an early fashion 
before the attack, hopefully several weeks before the attack, so they're not caught at the last minute scrambling out off the roof like we had to do in Vietnam. Um, so that's that's a very serious matter, Alexander, when uh, we see these embassies closing and their people being evacuated, which I, I think that's a fair assessment on your part that uh, we're, we're getting ready to go to war. And uh, Turkey taking command and control of the Syrian rebels is another part of this. Of course, Turkey ran that part of the country, of the, uh, that part of the world, for at least six centuries before the Ottoman Empire was broken up. The Ottoman Empire being run from Turkey. Uh, that's very significant that Turkish armed forces are taking control of, Syri- of these Syrian rebels. Don't you think? Well, it's very considerable considering that uh, they turned their back on NATO and. Uh, Turkey is really basically siding with Iran on this, on these issues and is anti-Israel. Uh, also, we have the head of Hezbollah, once again, uh, Hassan Nasrallah, saying, you know, that the U.S. Middle East bases will pay, will pay dearly if Israel attacks Iran. Why does he say this? Well, we have a situation where there's a, a plan. If Iran is attacked by Israel, uh, Hezbollah would attack all U.S. bases in the region. And what would happen is Obama would be forced, according to specialists, to use ICBM weaponry against Tehran or uh, locations in Iran in order to stop this because of the huge investment military-wise. Right, right. Well, things are heating up, and uh, you were talking and telling me about an earlier conversation you had with Dr. Bill earlier today, and he was expressing his concern. Uh, I share Dr. Bill's concern. Uh, all the chess places chess players are being put in place on the chessboard in what appears to be an end game for World War III uh, about to get underway. And Nasrallah, the head of Hezbollah, said there are three things uh, that he sent in his message from uh, Tehran to Washington and Jerusalem. He said Iran believes an Israeli attack will take place before the U.S. presidential election on November 6th. Number two, Tehran is drawing on a powerful deterrent. Uh, and uh, what we're seeing here is a uh, low-key Iranian response to an attack on its nuclear facilities. And what we, we will see that uh, basically uh, terrorism. Terrorism uh, will be conducted against uh, specific uh, Western targets, not only in the Middle East, but also around the world. Well, along the same lines, uh, there's a note on Drudge here right now that quantitative easing number three is coming. That's what I've been looking for is the next quantitative easing matter. Uh, that will be the precipitating event for the financial collapse that would lead to the uh, bank holiday, which would lead to the election being canceled. And we knew they would align everything perfectly like a satanic symphony. You know what I mean? I mean, they're oh, yeah. putting all the instruments to play the same song to create the great crescendo of total turmoil and destruction. I agree, absolutely. Another interesting headline, they've got... Uh, uh, Clint Eastwood in one of his cowboy outfits, and a, and a, uh, a quote from him that Hussein Obama is the greatest hoax ever perpetrated on the American people. <laughs> How about that? Well, he is, you know. Well, he is. Uh, you know, you you can't be president of the United States and and have only one American parent. Both parents have to be Americans to be a natural born citizen. That seems to get past most people, doesn't it, Alexander? Yeah, and Lyndon LaRouche, I mean, he's 90 years old. He's still shouting out and saying, you know, these people in the elite are insane. They want thermonuclear war. They want the U.S. destroyed. They have. They want the whole world destroyed. And he says you cannot allow a thermonuclear war just because these guys in Congress don't feel like fighting. And uh, that's well, right for now, once, today. I agree. I, 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 there's not much I agree with with Lyndon LaRouche, but I certainly agree with that statement that these people are yeah. absolutely insane and that uh, they will unleash thermonuclear war in a heartbeat if they think it serves their purposes. And we know that the time is running out because in Iran, they already, you know, prepared all the troops and uh, the Iranian Republican Guard. They prepared them that this was the war to end all wars. They gave them this special book, according to uh, Reza Khalili, remember, that basically prepares them for the 12th Mahdi coming out of the uh, the bottomless um, pit. This 12th Mahdi person, they think that he will be revealed uh, sometime after or during this war, don't they? Well, the perfect scenario is in the new Batman movie that just came out. You have to watch that and look at it 
this this Bane character is radical Islam, and this uh, Ra Shagul's uh, daughter, who's a little girl that looks like a boy, comes out of a bottomless pit. It's the initiation of Islamic invasion of the world. It's really it's just well, a I guess massive I need to watch ritual that they did in Hollywood. <laughs> I wasn't aware I needed to watch the new Batman movie, but maybe I'll uh, watch it this weekend if I have some discretionary time. Well, the embedded codes in that movie are uh, tantamount and necessary for anybody to understand how they will collapse the United States. It's the same thing that's happening right now. That's inside that movie. They're acclimating amazing. society to accepting this, yeah. Absolutely amazing. Uh, and, and, of course, we've known for years, Alexander, that the powers that be like to uh, broadcast their subtle and not-so-subtle messages in mainstream Hollywood movies, don't they? Yeah, no, this is now in-your-face kind of deal. Uh, this is like, look, this is what we're going to do anyway, and you can't stop us. We're going to do uh, Islamic terror in your streets. We're going to collapse and create total anarchy and chaos within the streets, and people will create their own justice system against the elites. That's what is being pushed, a communist agenda, uh, right there in, the, in, the, in your movie called Batman, The Dark Knight Rising. Uh, same ritual he did at the Olympics, you know, with this uh, massive display of uh, good morning to the night. It's like the black awakening here. and It's, it's just terrible. We have to just uh, uh, prepare ourselves, prepare our families, and go into prayer because I think uh, we're, uh, we're weeks away from... Uh, from something really may very well be, and, and I agree with you absolutely. Where our spiritual house needs to be in order, I encourage people to visit alexanderbachman.com. I encourage people to visit homeland-defense-number-four-letter-u.com, Dr. Deagle's website, Nutra Medical, um, and be a regular listener to uh, uh, Alexander and myself. Alexander is going to be on my show Monday morning on Republic Broadcasting. Dr. Deagle presents a lot of good information that people need to be aware of to be healthy and be safe. And, of course, my website is thelibertyman.com. We have a relatively short time to alert and be the watchman on the wall for as many people as possible, don't we, Alexander? Yes. And uh, pray for uh, all the people that, you know, are over there in Iran. There are so many good Christian people there. You know, Bibles are being uh, distributed as we speak. It's prohibited by law over there. But, you know, and pray for the Christian pastor over there. Yousef, uh, that's, uh, you know, on trial for being Christian. It's kind of ironic that uh, the country that was the best place in the Middle East, even above and beyond Israel, our ally, uh, up until a few years ago, was Iraq. The best place in the in the Middle East to be a Christian, wasn't it? Precisely. Yeah. And now, you know, and what's at stake with Assad going down is putting Sharia law back again in Syria, and, uh, you know, all the Christian people that live in Syria are going to suffer the consequences. And I tell they them will. now, if you listen to this broadcast, get out of Syria now. They will. Well, they, they know. These, these people are smart people. They know they need to evacuate. And, and their centuries-long tradition of getting along with Muslims is, is coming to an end, just like it did in Lebanon, just like it did in, in Iraq. Uh, once these, uh, you know, all a fundamental Muslim is is somebody who really believes what the Koran says, aren't they, Alexander? Yeah, it's just demonic in nature, if you ask me. Yeah, it is demonic. Well, we're out of time. Uh, Anne, thank you very much. Alexander, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we will conclude this uh, episode of the uh, Dr. Bill Deagle Nutra Medical Report. You all be safe out there. Buy lots of ammunition. Never give up your guns. And God bless America.